So the big story today is that F-16s have landed in Ukraine, but that's not the only thing that we're going to talk about. We have a lot of news to get through, so I'm going to just cut through it as quickly as we can. Thank you for spending this time with me. This is a daily brief. 1,110 Russians off the battlefield. I think it was the same number or very close to that yesterday. Two tanks, 17 armored combat vehicles, 59 artillery pieces, and we're going to come back to that in just a moment. Vehicles and fuel tanks, 56, only three cruise missiles. So I told you we're going to come back to this armored combat vehicles. Look at this number, 15,000. There are 15,000, more than 15,000 artillery pieces that are now off the battlefield, just like there are 15,000 armored combat vehicles off the battlefield. 15,000 artillery systems is amazing. Okay, here's Andrew Perpetua's numbers. This looks a lot better than yesterday um, so we have about what four to one something like that russian to ukrainian losses and that's a good day now i'm, I'm showing you a building materials warehouse in fire on fire in occupied luhansk but th we're not going to see very much of that at all today most of the news is actually political the nato summit was yesterday and nato got a lot of what it wanted or ukraine got a lot of what it, it wanted from nato uh and i'm going to talk about that tonight in the three big stories but um i'm monitoring that and we'll we'll get back to that but for right now, Michael McFall says the NATO summit is a big win for Biden. The alliance, uh, alliance's resurgence since Russia's invasion of Ukraine is a signature achievement. Well, yeah, to some degree, it's it's actually more of an achievement for Putin in, in a meaningful way. Like he unified NATO like nobody else has been able to do. Not taking anything away from Biden. Biden's getting a chance to look presidential, meeting with Keir um, Starmer. And this is a good thing they're talking about. Their special... Uh, special relationship that's what the brits and americans talk about about their relationship started off a little rocky with the american revolution but in recent century or so it's been a very special relationship and these two are going to be on the same page philosophically more often than not uh although he's bracing against a potential trump victory in november which may or may not happen we don't know but he has to you know try to figure out what he's going to do if that happens a new nato missile defense base has started operating in poland alliance secretary jens stoltenberg has said so according to reuters the citing the sec general secretary statements the base allows intercepting short and medium range ballistic missiles at the same time it's part of nato's larger missile defense shield so this just went up um, now rt is talking about the nato summit and they this was just amazing that they would even say this ukraine is timing tragedies to coincide coincide with important international events according to the kremlin really it's uh, so bombing the hospital in kiev was blamed on ukraine timing it to coincide with nato but you sent the rockets and okay yeah that's i mean this is like somebody mugs you in the supermarket shopping center parking lot and says well you know you did this to me because you were flashing that money around and then you, you knew you were flashing that money around right in front of a cop i mean it doesn't just doesn't make sense okay thank you for spelling it out very well what russia means by a peace plan medyev urged uh to prepare for a complete takeover of ukraine after uh, signing a peace with kiev Listen to, I mean, he actually is talking about this. Listen to this. Medyev once more confirmed that Russia's ultimate goal is destroying Ukraine completely. Should it succeed, Russia won't stop here. This is a translation of an excerpt from his Telegram post. Quote, a moderate political regime will emerge on the ruins of the preserved part of the former Ukraine. But even this will not be the end of Russia's military operation. You heard it yourself, right? I didn't, I'm not making this up. Even after signing the papers and accepting defeat, the remaining radicals will sooner or later return to power after regrouping their forces inspired by Russia's Western enemies. That's apparently the U.S. and maybe Britain and such. Okay, and then it will be time to finally crush the scum, to drive the long steel nail into the coffin lid of the Banderite quasi-state and return the remaining lands to the bosom of the Russian land. Like, that's the plan. Like, he, he's saying it. I'm not making this up. 
Okay. Meanwhile, Chechia or Czechia is calling for Russia trash of humanity. Now, there's a reason that they're calling them that. It's because of the hospital, but it's also what happened yesterday. Russia, who is the chair of the UN Security Council right now, I'd like wrap that around your mind. Russia did not allow Czechia to speak at the UN Security Council yesterday. They are afraid of criticism and vocal positions. Czechia gave the speech to their ambassador in Prague. What did they want to say? Well, let's let's read it here. Quote, first and foremost, on behalf of Czechia, I wish to express my profound sorrow and sadness at the attacks at the Children's Hospital. What happened yesterday is unconscionable. It's beyond the pale. Czechia condemns the strong in the strongest terms the devastating attacks perpetrated by the Russian Federation. The horrific spectacle of relentless death and destruction caused by Russia's blatant aggression reached a new dark chapter yesterday. Targeting small, innocent, and sick children with hypersonic missiles is utterly shocking. Directing attacks against civilians and civilian objects is a war crime. Russia continues to completely disregard international law. Now remember, the forum here is in the United Nations Security Council where he's talking about this. Russia continues to completely disregard international law. Colleagues, no matter what lies the Russian propagandists continue to spread, the simple truth remains Putin's Russia is the aggressor. Let's read that again. Putin's Russia is the aggressor. How do you get around that? The gross violation of the UN Charter and international law is Russia's choice. Again, this was for the Security Council. Let that sink in. Those responsible for this war must be held to account. Czech support for Ukraine remains unwavering. The international community must take concrete steps to end the war and support Ukraine's sovereignty within its internationally recognized borders. Okay, that's a pretty strong statement, and it's no wonder that the Russians didn't want him to say that. Okay, here's the big story. F-16 fighter jets in Ukraine skies by summer of 2024 has already been fulfilled. According to Dmitry Kuliba, he's the foreign minister. We were promised that F-16s would, would fly in Ukrainian skies in the summer of 2024. That promise has been fulfilled. F-16s are there. We haven't seen them in action yet, but they're there. That's the headline. He says, I can't share the route of the F-16 planes. When we will see them in the Ukrainian sky, I think all questions will be answered. We are also already working on the increase in the number of F-16 planes that will be handed over to Ukraine. So that's good news. Meanwhile, Canada plans to commit another 500 million Canadian dollars for military assistance, including uh, training of Ukrainian pilots. The Netherlands is purchasing more than $300 million worth of ammo for the F-16s. And so thank you to the Netherlands and Canada. Now, Kiev has decided he, they turned down Sweden's offer for Gripen warplanes, and that's because it's hard to train multiple systems. That's what they said down here. It'd just be too much to handle training both systems simultaneously. But but that was Kiev's decision to say, you know, let's if we can just get more F-16s, let's let's stay with that. Denmark is financing the production of 18 Ukrainian self-propelled artillery units, and so thank you to the Danes. By the way, this this struck a, a thought with me. I think that one of the things that'll happen if Trump is elected is that NATO and NATO countries will put orders in for huge amounts of American modern weaponry that Trump's not going to cancel a deal or, or an order on. And then you have that stuff flowing in. Um, and so while Trump is a wild card and you don't know what would happen, I think that's what they will do. I, I can't prove that. This is not a prophecy. It's just my thought. The Drone Coalition is creating a fund to support Ukraine with 45 million euros, which may increase according to the UK government. And the Netherlands is also giving another 20 million euros for the drone as well. Okay, uh, another peace summit is potentially in the works, and Russia will be invited, but they've already said that they're not going to come. According to the Russians, Zelensky's peace formula is just, that's, that's unacceptable. Well, okay, your peace offer is even more unacceptable to the Ukrainians. 
Prisoners mobilized to join the armed forces of Ukraine will be at the front by the end of the summer, according to the Justice Minister. So far, there are 2,872 prisoners that have voluntarily said, well, I would like to serve rather than finish my time here. And these they couldn't be murderers or rapists and terrorists and that sort of thing. Uh, they had to have lighter sentences. But yeah, and it could be another 5,000 recruits or up to another 5,000 recruits. Meanwhile, Bellingcat, I talked about this yesterday, they were, they had a, a something on Twitter saying, hey, look, this could be like dangerous or whatever. The, the warning message on the linked article has now been removed. And again, I think it was just Russian trolls tricking the system to make sure that that was there. I don't think it was any ill will on the part of Twitter. I could be wrong, but that's my speculation. Okay, U.S. supplied JDAM glide bombs. Hey, look, if, if Russia can do it, Ukraine can do it, and it's just a matter of who can do more with it in a better, t quicker time. Finally, last two things I want to show you. <laughs> Andrew Perpetua put this up. I'm not convinced people understand how explosives work. <laughs> And the last thing that I saw was key translations. So you have English for school and you have the Ukrainian hospital, church, apartment block, shops, house, restaurant, zoo, animal shelter, the Ukrainian translation, and the Russian translation of target, 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 target. Yeah, that's where we are, folks. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.